Hope you guys have seen these bags before, famously called Ghana Must Go. Surprisingly, the name for it wasn't just made up, it has a lot of history behind it. A history of pains and intolerance. Today these bags are everywhere and even turned into fashion products. The steady check bags which normally comes in red and blue were the bags most Ghanaians used to pack their belongings when they were explored in 1983 from Nigeria. This video essay is about the fate Ghanaians faced in 1983 overseas and the iconic bag attached to it. Sit back, relax and enjoy. In the late 70s to mid 80s, Ghana was going through a tough time. Cocoa, which was the top export in Ghana, dropped in demand. Bushfires were rampant and the inconsistent governance made the economy very unstable. The inflation was so high that basic food and basic commodities became a luxury. Even if you had the money, there was nothing to buy. Queues became rampant, which resulted in the eventual introduction of Kalabuli. Kalabuli is when retailers or wholesalers hoard products or goods and sell at ridiculously high prices. Due to these hard times, many citizens were fed up and wanted to travel out to seek for a greener pasture for themselves and their families. Ghana was literally a failing state. Back in the 60s, Nigeria struck oil and this caused a massive gain for the country. In the 70s, the oil was in an all-time high demand and this brought wealth to Nigeria, hence their title, Giants of Africa. Nigeria literally became the wealthiest country in Africa and this drew attention from everyone around them, especially Ghanaians. Almost a million Ghanaians traveled to Nigeria. Ghanaians didn't waste any time taking up jobs, no matter how many they were. Teaching, carpentry, masonry, security, Ghanaians were in awe. Food and other commodities were very affordable in Nigeria and day by day, Ghanaians traveled in their numbers to witness this greatness. Everything was going great until 1982. Large consumer markets such as the United States and Canada slipped into recession and the demand was low. USA began to produce its own oil and this affected the Nigerian economy very much. Their economy was dwindling day by day and eventually inflation came into the mix. Ghanaians who were trying to run away from the inflation in their country began to experience deja vu. Food prices skyrocketed and salaries became erratic. The low income earners, who were primarily Ghanaians, were hit the hardest. In 1982, politicians started to use words like aliens in their manifestos and preparing for the 1983 general elections. They blamed African migrants, especially Ghanaians, for their failing economy. Ghanaians are taking all their jobs and brought crime to Nigeria. And if elected, they will chase them out. If they don't leave, they should be arrested and tried and sent back to their homes. Illegal immigrants, in fact, under normal circumstances, should not be given any notice whatsoever. If you break a law, then we have to pay for it. Ghana was still unstable with a military regime that was battling uprisings, so it wasn't a good idea to return. This caused a big dilemma for the illegal immigrants on the Nigerian land. Over 80% of the Ghanaian illegal immigrants packed their belongings into these big check bags. Seeing this, Nigerians started to name the supposed check bags Ghana Must Go, coining the term to represent the fate of Ghanaians in their country. The Ghana Must Go Bag officially became a symbol of exclusion. The borders were a disaster, clammed up with desperate people carrying luggages on their head, dragging their check bags and selling off whatever they couldn't lift to make money to pay for fares that has been doubled. Millions streamed out through any possible exits they could find. But Jerry John Rawlings, Ghana's military head of state at that time, had ordered the borders with Togo closed to stop coup plotters and insurgents, so there would be no passage for days. Togo also decided to close its border to follow suit with what Ghana had done. The deadlock in 1983 was finally broken by Ghana, which reopened its borders and sent ships to Kotobu in Benin to reduce the number of people traveling by road. Many fell into the sea because of the sheer volume of people scrambling for a place on the ship. Yeah, Shani say she no go up in for the bros. My bros know they play, they go up in the impulse. Oh yeah, why not they if you want make it more fact to the matter? We they up in 